Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Good morning. A driver has died after a single car accident early this morning. State troopers say a driver was heading south on Winery Road in Sneeds Ferry around 12.45 a.m. when he or she ran off the road, hit a ditch, and flipped. Troopers say the car hit a mobile home before coming to arrest on a parked vehicle. The driver was ejected, and a woman inside the home found the driver on their porch, according to the Highway Patrol. Troopers say the woman performed CPR until first responders arrived and pronounced the driver dead at the scene. Troopers believe speed was a factor in the crash. The driver will not be identified until the family has been notified. President Donald Trump has approved a major disaster declaration for North Carolina to provide federal assistance to areas impacted by Tropical Storm Michael last fall. The declaration was announced in a news release issued Thursday and covers 21 counties statewide. It provides federal funding for state and local government and certain private nonprofit organizations on a cost-sharing basis for emergency work and the repair or replacement of facilities damaged October 10th through the 12th by the tropical, tropical storm. Eastern North Carolina counties affected by the declaration are Dare and Hyde. Hurricane Michael slammed into Florida's Panhandle with 155 mile per hour winds on October 10th and also blew through Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia. Two busy streets will be closing for months to make way for the biggest infrastructure project in the history of Greenville. Fifth Street and Reed Circle will be closing this spring and won't fully reopen until late in the fall. The closures will allow crews to continue work on the Town Creek Culvert Project. City leaders met with business owners and citizens to provide an update on the construction. Stormwater damage project runs from the Tar River at the Town Common up to 9th Street in the Uptown area. Fifth Street will close starting in March through this summer, while Reed Circle will close in April and won't reopen until November. Business owners say the closures will hurt in the short term, but are worth it in the end. And finally, Governor Roy Cooper is urging people who still need Hurricane Florence repairs to their homes to apply to the STEP program. Eligible homeowners have until 11.59 p.m. this evening to complete a right of entry form to take part in the Sheltering and Temporary Essential Power Program. It provides partial repairs at no cost to homeowners so they can return to and remain in their homes while longer term repairs continue. So far, 116 homes have been repaired or under repair through the STEP program. You can apply with a link we have provided on WITN.com or by calling 833-257-1100. That's your WITN News Update, and I'm Mark Gettner. Mild and mostly sunny today for your Friday with highs in the mid-50s. For tonight, cold and dry with lows around freezing. For the weekend, Saturday looking good, sunny and warmer with highs around 60 degrees. Overnight lows tomorrow night will be in the upper 30s. And for your Sunday, we'll see partly sunny skies with a high of 62 degrees and lows around 42. Right now it's 27 degrees in Greenville, 28 in New Bern. Quick traffic alert if you're in Greenville, hearing that you should look to avoid Arlington Boulevard right now. There have been a couple of accidents right now along Arlington Boulevard. So if you're driving that way, be careful. And you may want to look for another detour to get where you're going this morning. Talk of the Town live on location at Give Kids a Smile Day. A lot of guests to get to here after this. Stay with us. We're live on 103.7 WTIB. All right, welcome back. We are live on location this morning. It is the annual Give Kids a Smile Day, 17th annual here at Jasper Lewis's office, Eastern Orthodontics and Pediatrics Dentistry. And, of course, so we got over 100 dentists here today, and they are working on kids that otherwise probably would never see a dentist. Most of these kids never seen a dentist before. And uh, we've got over 20 dentists out here today, a lot of my friends who would never work on Friday, much less work for free. <laughs> and they're out here today. They're out here today and uh, donating their time. This is a great cause. One of the biggest events like this in the entire country. And, of course, a lot of celebrities coming through. We're already seeing politicians and policymakers and people from ECU. And now we've, uh, we're, we're fortunate enough to have Mike Houston here, the new football coach. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How, How are you? Doing? you? I'm good. It's your good. first. Uh, there are a couple of things you'll learn about Greenville. Okay. This is your first Give Kids a Smile Day. Never right. say no to Jasper Lewis. No. Uh, yeah, but I, I figured that out. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really given an option, you know. Yeah, know. Just kind of like show up here at this time. Well, Jasper is a great guy. I was just, I was just right. telling uh, John Gilbert, you know, uh, 
uh, Jasper's done so much for Eastern North Carolina, but right. the, the big thing he's done for all of us, of course, is he that he founded the dental school here. Right. If if it hadn't been for him, this dental school would never have been here because he fought the legislature on it, which we have to fight the legislature on everything. But anyway, let's talk. Let's don't talk politics. Let's talk about you. How you been? And how's it been good. how's it going? Getting the family assimilated. I know you guys are here now, and we, uh, yeah, we, we all slept in the same house last night. So that's good. <laughs> so I got I got in uh, yesterday evening. Have they been uh, back and forth? No, they've been here. Yeah. They got here about a week and a half ago. And, yeah. Uh, I promptly left town. So I've been on the road recruiting and yeah. uh, got in last night. Uh, but, uh, you know, the boxes are slowly going away and uh, the boys <laughs> are, are enjoying school. Uh, you know, the, the staff there at Wintergreen Elementary has been fantastic. And uh, Amanda's, you know, she's figuring her way around town. So uh, yeah. everybody's doing well. Yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, it's, I'm beginning to see you around town now, which is neat. And, uh, and of course, uh, we all love Greenville and what a great community it is. And you guys look like you fit right in, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, you, it's been a whirlwind for you, I know, because yeah. uh, ever since you uh, announced as the head coach, you've, you've been on the road recruiting. Right. And, right. um, and uh, how do you feel that went? Uh, it, or you know, it's going? Really, I don't know that it could have went any better. Uh, you know, we'll we'll sign a couple of kids next Wednesday, but you know we signed the bulk back in December. Uh, you know, really right now we're working on the 2020 and the 2021 class. You know, but the coaches here in the state of North Carolina have been, you know, they've been very enthusiastic about you know our staff being here and East Carolina University, and so right. uh, I don't know that it could have went any better. Uh, it's been a real positive start, but uh, you know the big thing is you know our strength staff's been working with our current players here, and I'm just I'm ready to get back here. You know, spend some more time with them. I see them about once a week. You know, if I find a day when I'm in town, we do a team meeting, and I spend some time <laughs> with the players. But I really, uh, I'm excited about having some more time with them coming up. Um, any big surprises for you, any uh, positive or negative, since you've been here? Well, I, th I think probably the biggest positive has been just the attitude and effort of the current players in our program. You know, you n you never know in transitions. Right. New coach coming in. Uh, how, how everybody's going to respond, but uh, you know the players have been fantastic, and they've uh, you know they've jumped right in, and uh, you know real positive attitudes, working very hard, uh, and Coach Williams, you know he has them five days a week right now, you know early in the morning, so uh, you know they're doing a great job. It's been really positive, and you know probably the other positive has just been the you know the support of the administration, the local community, and the enthusiasm for our football program. Uh, I don't know that I could expect it to be any better than it has been. Yeah. Mike Houston, the new football coach at ECU, and, uh, and you know, we've uh, <laughs> been through some tough years recently, but I'll tell you, everybody's excited about you being here, and when this place is all pulling in the right direction, in the right. same direction, uh, there is nothing better in the country than ECU football. So well, I'm, I'm very excited about you being here, and I think you're the guy that's going to pull it back together. Well, and, that, and that's the reason I came here, you know, yeah. to, to go to a place where football is important, where you have that kind of support. Uh, that kind of uh, excitement around the program, uh, the alumni, the fans, the 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 the, the university, um, you know that's that's what you want when you're in my profession. And, you know, right. uh, and you know, really excited about the young men that I've inherited. And uh, but uh, I, I look forward to Daddy Ficklin this fall. I can't wait to our first game. You know, I want to see I want to see it rocking, you know, the way it always has been, and uh, and get some uh, get some more uh, momentum going back in a positive direction with the program. I was just talking to John Gilbert. Of course, we had uh, Representative Murphy on earlier this morning. A lot of political talk this morning about yeah. uh, the governor's comments yesterday about the Virginia Tech situation. Uh, Greg Murphy, and you may not have heard this, but Murphy, and you may know this already, but you may not. Uh, Representative Murphy just announced on our program that he's introducing legislation having to do with ECU and that Virginia Tech situation and maybe some other political stuff that would be, as he put it, very beneficial to ECU and ECU football. So you might want to go over there and let him whisper yeah. in your ear what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. Yeah. So, uh, but, but the, uh, of course, uh, John announced this week that uh, William and Mary is going to right. fill that spot in the schedule. And, of course, you're very familiar with them right. being from yeah. Virginia. And, uh, and, and we are, too, from the old days. We hadn't played them in a long time. But I was just telling John, John just asked me, what do you think about the William and Mary thing? I said, I think it's great. You know, you had to get a FCS team. You knew you're going to have to get somebody like that, but regionally. But there's a history right. there because, sure. heck, some of my fondest memories in the early days, the Pat Dye years and all that right. was going up to Williamsburg. Right. So. You know, Mike, Mike London, the new coach there, yeah. you know, everybody everybody knows him and his reputation. So he'll do a great job. It's, uh, you know, it's just a good regional matchup. They have a great fan base. It's an outstanding institution. 
uh, our, our alumni and fans will recognize them. So we thought it was a good fit, you know, for that slot, yeah. for that slot right there. Yeah. And then in future years, the question or not whether we'll go to Virginia Tech or not, um, I'm guessing we won't. <laughs> That's <laughs> unless, above, my, above my pay grade. Unless there's, so. some, unless there's something <laughs> in this legislation that Murphy's put right. in. <laughs> well, you know, you hate to see the series come to an end. Yeah. Uh, because it's been such a great rivalry. Uh, two outstanding institutions, so I hope something can save it. Uh, but you, there's got to be some give and take by both by both schools. Somebody told me the other day that you know you were their neighbor; they don't want any part of Mark, Mike Houston. So <laughs> maybe that's maybe you're the reason why they canceled it. <laughs> uh, I don't think it had anything to do with it, but uh, you know, I've, I've always wanted uh, you know a chance to play them. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we get that opportunity. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, I'll let you get around a visit. You sure. didn't come over here to see us; you came to see the kids and uh, all the dentists well, and support what's and going just, on and here. Just what a what an outstanding event. You yeah. know, uh, it's my first time, yeah. but you know, something like this for the community uh, yeah. is just really special, and uh, and I think a model for for everyone across the country of yeah. of how to support yeah. uh, support yeah. each other. Well, this is part of Greenville at its best, to be honest right. with you. I mean, these guys, these dentists, uh, all great guys, and. Uh, and coming together and, and, and giving these kids free dental care. It's pretty amazing, really. I mean, you don't see this happen everywhere. No, no, it's it's really special. So yeah. excited to be a part of it. Yeah, good to see you, Coach. Thanks a lot. Good to All see right, you, and too. And we're going to see you later this month because we're going to have a little meet and greet for you. I know you've got a meet and greet coming up, too, where you're going to uh, talk about your recruiting class. When is right. it? Right. You know, Signing next Wednesday. Is it next Wednesday before, February 6th. The, before the basketball game? Yeah, we're going to have a, a deal that night just to talk about the class uh, and – you know, not not just our class, but uh, everybody to meet our coaches and uh, and, talk and that's about the open program. to everybody. Yeah, they open at, to at all the fans. club level. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. So, and then on February 22nd, I believe it is, you're going to be back with us, and we're going to have a right. little community meet and greet for you on the morning yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, at Great Harvest, and yeah. so we'll, that'll we'll be have a, fun. we'll have a lot more information uh, well down the road by then. So. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good to see you. Be good to see Thank you, too. You. Yeah. We're excited about you Thanks being here. I'm excited, too. Go yeah. Pirates. My, yeah, go Pirates. Mike Houston, the uh, the football coach at ECU, and uh, very excited about Coach Houston being here. Uh, what a great uh, what a great land that was for the Pirates. All right, 20 minutes after 8. I know Jasper's lining up other interviews for me, so why don't I grab a quick break, and we'll come back. It is Give Kids a Smile Day here at uh, Eastern Orthodontics and Pediatrics Dentistry. What an incredible community event going on here this morning, and uh, we'll cover it more for you when we come back. Stay with us, 20 after 8. All right, welcome back. It is 23 minutes after 8 o'clock. We're live on location this morning at Give Kids a Smile Day here in Greenville. Great event going on, and there's uh, ECU uh, players and coaches and politicians and people from uh, the healthcare field here, people from politics here, including my buddy Trey Lewis, who is here this morning. Trey is regional representative for Senator Tom Tillis's office and former mayor of Macclesfield. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, how are you? Hey, great. Thank you Good for having me. You. Good they, to see you. This is an amazing event here. First time? This is my first time being here, and I, I can't believe all the people. The, the movers and shakers of Greenville are all here. I think uh, I think Senator Tillis actually has been to this event. It might have been when he was Speaker of the House, but mm -hmm. uh, I think he's been to this event at least mm -hmm. once or twice. Uh, as, you know, as, as I've said to other people this morning, you don't say no to Jasper Lewis. So, you know, <laughs> That's right. You're not kin That's to him, are you? Well, we were talking about that, and there might be some relation there because we're both from from small towns right here yeah. in the area. So, right. so we might be. What do you do for uh, for people who don't know kind of what your uh, your your role is? What do you do for Senator Tillis's office? So I cover the 19 northeastern counties for Senator Tillis. I am his northeast regional representative. I go from Nash County to the coast and cover Pitt County, Beaufort County, basically a liaison uh, yeah. for the people in the area to the office, and yeah. I'm his representative at any meetings, events that he can't make it to. He's a busy guy, as you know. You right. know Senator Tillis personally. You know how busy he is. Yeah, yeah. so you basically represent him, and uh, and if someone uh, needs to get him information, you're the guy to call. That's Welcome. right. You can, you can go to me. You yeah. go to me, and I'll get it straight up to D.C., straight to Senator Tillis, make sure it's on his radar and staff's yeah. radar. All right, good. Well, I'm uh, I'm going up there with a bunch of broadcasters uh, in a couple weeks, and I think we're scheduled to meet with he and Senator Byrd. They're always nice to meet us when we mm -hmm. go up there. We got some broadcasting issues mm -hmm. that you and I can discuss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the FCC, they're doing a pretty good job for broadcasters these days, but 
you know, there are a lot of question marks. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah. we do like the new uh, commissioner of the FCC, yeah, Commissioner he's been Pye. North Carolina. Yeah. He's been in North Carolina several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commissioner Pye. Yeah. yeah. He's catching a lot of heat from the liberals, but that's why I like him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, listen, it's great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, thank and, you for uh, Thank you for coming, and I'll let you get around and uh, shake hands and kiss babies. But oh, yeah, yeah. see all the dentists and support what's going on here. But thank you for stopping in from yeah. Senator Tillis's office. It's a great event. Thank you for Tell the me. senator I said hello. I sure will. All right, sure good will. talking to you, Trey. Right, good to see you. It. Trey Lewis from uh, Tom Tillis's office. And uh, now, let's see. Let's get Billy Williams on. Billy is uh, – Dr. Billy Williams is one of the organizers of this event. He also happens to be my dentist. And can you check my third molar while we're – Checkbook. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's no free service for me today. Uh, Billy Williams is here. Billy's one of the great people in Greenville. And, of course, uh, he is one of the uh, organizers of this event and has been for years. And uh, another successful event. I'm telling you, you guys do an unreal job with this. It's doing great. It's doing great. It looks like, uh, it looks like we're having a good, really good show rate, and that's good. The weather's cooperating. And so I'm, they may have told you just who's how many and all that. I don't know. There's about 25 dentists, I believe, and, and uh, about 150 volunteers and about 100 kids we hope to see. Wow. Yeah. And, and somebody has to coordinate this, and I know you're one of them. Well, there's a lot of people that do it, you know, yeah. and it's a big group now. It's gotten a lot bigger than it used to be with the, with all the other schools involved. But um, I do my part, and, you know, certainly you do your part, and I think everybody's pleased in how it's going so far. But it's a pretty good crowd right now. This is a, uh, this is a great event. It, yeah. It's always a lot of fun for us because we get to – interview everybody in town when they come through. Well, you know, really the nice thing about it is is there obviously was some turnover in East Carolina, so now you're bringing yeah. in some people who've never been here before. Right. Some of the coaches, in athletic fact, director. In fact, I was just talking yeah. to John Gilbert and Mike Houston, and they're amazed at this thing. Right. Exactly. John, John, John's exact comment was – this is why Greenville is so special because you right. don't see this kind of stuff happen everywhere. Well, this this is the most comprehensive program in the state. There's no question yeah, about it. That's right, well right. known, too. That's why yeah. people come to it and awesome. see it. Just look around. But awesome. thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's right. always a pleasure. Right, nice to, Good see to see you, Billy. Thank you. Dr. Billy Williams, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the dentists here who organizes. All right, come on in. Uh, Dr. Bobby White, who is uh, Chief Executive Officer for the North Carolina State Board of Dental Examiners. Right. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning. Glad How to are be you? Here. Doing Thank fine. you for Thank stopping you. by. Well, I'm glad to good be to here. Good to see you. Now, what is your job exactly? Do you uh, do you go around and check on people like Billy Williams and make sure he's behaving? Well, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we are the <laughs> we're the regulatory agency that uh, regulates dentistry and dental hygiene in North Carolina. Well, I got, our, some, I got something I need to tell you after the interview. No, well, we, we get, you know, one of our jobs is to, to accept complaints from the yeah. public. Bill or is others. listening in so, oh, yeah. so yeah. carefully right now. I can't say much about his dossier, but I, public, <laughs> but I can we can share that well, off he, He's been president of the North Carolina Dental Society recently. Right. Are you still? Two yeah. years ago, so he's uh, he's well respected. Well, one of the things that's uh, very unique in North Carolina and, and is really the envy of a lot of other states and in, in, throughout the United States is the relationship between the North Carolina Dental Society, which is a professional organization, and our our group, which is a regulatory agency. We right. do work together, and uh, uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, we, we we try to to tweak r rules and regulations so that we can provide the broadest access to care to people in North Carolina. As today, evidence. This is evidence of that kind of work here today. Yeah, it's pretty so, amazing what they do here, isn't it? It all really is. Yeah. And, uh, but this is just kind of a tip of the iceberg because all throughout North Carolina, dentists provide tons of free services for children, for parents, uh, on individual basis right. in small towns and cities throughout our, throughout right. our state. We're always grateful for that. Uh, Dr. Bobby White, the Chief Executive Officer for, uh, or is it Mr. Bobby? You're an attorney, I'm an not attorney, a that's right. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a doctor. Uh, uh, Bobby White, who's the CEO of the North Carolina State Board of Dental Examiners. And I guess, do you have a staff that works for you that in investigates complaints right. and things like that? We, we sure do. We have uh, two we have three investigators that cover the state. When we get complaints about dentists or dental hygienists, uh, we have to talk to the folks who have been victimized or think they've been victimized by a dentist or dental hygienist. And then we uh, put together a legal legal um, investigative file and see if, in fact, there's any truth to the, to the map. Most of the time, it turns out that folks just have unrealistic expectations of the treatment or yeah, what right. what they've been through. Right. Uh, but but yeah, occasionally, but sure, as as always in, in, in every industry, right, every walk right. of light, there's an apple here. There, or there, there's there's a, a little rotten to right, it. exactly. <laughs> and there are about six thousand five hundred dentists in North Carolina now. Wow. 
and uh, we never have any problems with 99% of those. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for stopping well, I'm by. I'm glad to see you. It's Thank nice you. to meet you. Glad and to, appreciate glad to be all here. you Thank do. You. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bobby, I, I'm sorry, I keep calling you Dr. Bobby White, the uh, CEO of the North Carolina State Board of Dental Examiners. And now Cliff Godwin is here. Hey, Coach, Reese. how you doing? How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm so excited about baseball. We're starting in less than two weeks. Two weeks from today. Is it two weeks? Today? Two weeks, exactly. Wow. It got Radford in? Radford, that's correct. All right. And, of course, all the games will be on 94.3, the yep. uh, Pirate Nation's flagship station. And, of course, we're going to have uh, the entire schedule on the radio again this year. We're very excited about it. And, uh, man, uh, after last year, everybody is juiced for ECU baseball. You got this town buzzing, man. Well, that's good. It's a lot of credit goes to our staff and our players. I mean, they do a tremendous job just trying to, you know, make our program a little bit better every single day. Do you like the expectations? Because, you know, when you came here, expectations were low. And everybody said, well, just give Cliff some time and he'll build it, which you have. But uh, do you like the position? You you like being the hunted or the hunter? <laughs> I mean, Henry. To be honest with you, first off, nobody puts more expectations on our program than I do myself. Secondly, it definitely is easier to be the hunter. I mean, that is. I mean, you look at all the successful programs that sustain success. There's not many. I mean, you look at yeah. Clemson football. You look at Alabama football. There's always a team that you know has a flash in the pan, but to sustain it. That's really hard, and that's what yeah. we work on every single day. Yeah. Um, schedule, uh, a lot of great home games. Uh, the conference uh, is so tough this year because uh, you got the great baseball programs in there like Tulane, Houston, Central Florida. Every now and then we'll pop up and have a great team. I know you were there for a while. Yeah. But um, uh, this is a tough conference, but uh, you guys uh, you guys won it last year, and uh, everybody's picking you to win it again this year. <laughs> well, they don't pass out trophies in the preseason. It ain't that easy, is it? It's not. And <laughs> But I will say this, that our baseball conference is, you know, either third or fourth RPI every single year. And, you know, everybody thinks the AAC is a basketball or football conference, and and no offense to those sports, but the baseball league is the toughest league. Oh yeah, I believe for sure. that for sure. Yeah, because I mean, you got uh, Tulane and Houston every year, man. Yeah, Tulane and Houston. And UConn, people don't even think about UConn. I mean, yeah. they've been tremendous under Jim Penders. Yeah. But at Tulane and Houston, they're saying, "Man, we got ECU." <laughs> <laughs> Goes back to the old Conference USA days. Yeah. Um, just about every. Uh, Every poll has you ranked in the top 15. Some have you high. I guess the highest one I saw, I thought I saw one in the top 10, but somebody told me the highest one was 11. Uh, and you got Bryant Packard back, who is getting preseason All American honors, which again, you know, you don't get a trophy for being preseason, but you got Packard back. You've got other marquee players, but you got Burleson back. You got some good pitchers back. You got Washer back behind the plate. Uh, what do you what do you think this year? I mean, you you you've got you got a really good group of kids coming back that were pretty darn good last year, Al <laughs> just almost made it to to the, the College thing, World Series last the, year. The thing I'll tell you, Henry, is in the fall it was a different fall. We had some guys that were hurt. Uh, we shut some pitchers down, so it was a challenge as a coaching staff to, you know, really get our guys going every single day. But since we've been back from Christmas. These guys have had an unbelievable amount of intent and energy in what we've done. Uh, we have not had a bad practice, and you know I don't say that very often. We have not had a bad practice, so we'll, of course we'll go out and have a bad practice today since I said that. But I I've been so <laughs> impressed by the way the guys have gone about their business. They are working every single day to get better, and that's what is the most important thing. Do you have, have you set any specific goals for this year, or do you do that? Look, I, I always are – I mean, look – we have a lot of goals. You know, one of our goals is to compete for a national championship. Um, another goal is we want all of our kids to graduate from East Carolina University. So uh, we want to host regionals. We want to host super regionals. We want to win conference championships. But we got to stay in the moment and focus on being the best versions of ourselves and really just get caught up in the process. If we do that, then the wins will take care of themselves. I just realized what a dumb question that was. Have you set goals? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of – I was trying to make you feel good. But. <laughs> Has Cliff Godwin set goals? That is the dumbest thing I've ever asked you. <laughs> well, listen, man, we are very excited about uh, baseball starting. Uh, anything you want to let people know about? We, we have a couple more days that you can buy tickets for our baseball banquet coming up uh, February 9th at the new student center. Which uh, we're sponsoring. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Hank told me he's gonna. He already purchased a table, so yeah, he told me it was right. his money, not your money. Yeah, Doug. BS. 
You know better than that. You know uh, Hank, and you know better than that. <laughs> and then, you know, our first game's February 15th, so we're ahead of season ticket sales from last year. Yeah. And, look, I want to finish top 15 in the country and average over 3,500 people a game. If we can do that, then I'll be very happy. Hey. I think we can do it this year. This, I do, too. This is going to be a lot of fun. There's nothing more fun than uh, ECU baseball. Yeah, absolutely. It Thanks for having me. Good to see you, bud. You, too. Thank you. All right, go Pirates. Uh, Cliff Godwin here at 836, 24 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. Talk of the town this morning. Good to see you. Dr. Lee Lewis is joining us. Good to see you. And uh, it's nice to see you. Another one of the organizers here, Lee Lewis, who is one of the owners of this practice, the Eastern Orthodontics and Pediatrics Dentistry. Lee has been one of the guys who's been so instrumental in starting this event here over the years and uh, 17 years of this now. And today looks like one of the most successful. Today has been really good. And, you know, 17 years has gone by in the blink of an eye. But it's amazing how the program has kind of changed over the years, starting out strictly as a dental program and now more of an overall health program yeah. um, for, for the children involved. Yeah. So, And this is one of the biggest one of these. And these are going on all over the country today, but this is one of the biggest ones anywhere. This is, this is a very large one, one of the biggest ones in our area for sure in, in the state. And uh, we always try, what we try to do is try to provide as much care as we can for these children, do as many things as we can, and if nothing else, get them educated and have a place that they can go after they leave. Yeah. You guys do an unbelievable job. I understand you're going to see over 100 kids today. Most of these kids never seen a dentist before? Uh, a lot of them have never seen a dentist before. Some of them have seen, you know, periodically, inconsistently. Um, and that's where, that's where we come in trying to get them established and get a dental home established for them for the future. Do most of them have serious problems? I'm looking around and I see... Uh, see a friend of mine over there who's a dentist who's got his instruments inside a child's mouth right now. I mean, are most of these kids in pretty good shape or you see some real chronic problems here? We see the whole gamut. And, you know, in years past and this even today, we've seen some children that come in with most of the teeth in their mouth severe problems. Wow. And uh, So what do you do when you see that? Because you can't deal with that in one day. We do as much as we can for those children while they're here, and then we try to get them set where they can actually have these things taken care of when they leave. Wow. That's sad to hear, but uh, God bless you for doing this so those kids can get some care. Well, you know, that's part otherwise of otherwise it might just keep deteriorating and they never get care. Well, that's true. And, you know, now we know the issues that dental problems can cause systemically. With, yeah. And, you know, those can be life-threatening for certain kids. You know, trying to make sure that they understand how dental health plays into overall health yeah. is a big yeah. part of it. And access to care is a real issue, not just for us here in Pitt County in eastern North Carolina, but throughout the country. Right. And that's part of what Give Kids a Smile Day is about, is trying to highlight that and really appreciate you uh, being here to help us do that. Well, it's always our pleasure to be here. We enjoy it. And, um, and we, we, uh, we would be here to support you guys, all the great job that you do here. So well, you God always bless. have, and we appreciate it. I see uh, our new basketball star just showed up. Jaden Gardner is walking around talking to the kids. That's pretty cool. I tell you what, they've seen. we've seen a lot of basketball stars, soccer stars. We've seen some of the football team yeah. and the coaches, and the ECU really steps up and uh, comes and takes, takes care of these kids and helps to keep them comfortable. Just talking to uh, John Gilbert about the fact that that kid right there has kind of, you know, he, he came in. He got in foul trouble in the first half last night, but when he came back in, he turned the game around. He plays as hard as anybody I've ever seen, one of the best freshmen in the country. So if this is any indication of where we're going, I know we're still not winning a lot of games in the conference, but uh, I think uh, Jaden Gardner is going to be the seed of something new here at ECU basketball. I think we're on the right track yeah. for sure. Good to see you. Good to see you. Dr. Thanks for Lee having Lewis. us. All right, we got to get a break in. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, we'll, we'll take, we're going to take a break, uh, and then we'll come back. We'll be right back, Jasper. Let me do this. How are you? We're, we're, we're live on the air. Good to see you. Have a seat. How are you? I'm Henry. I'm Karen Yarbrough, right. Can East you Carolina. hang on? I sure can. Because we got to take a break, and yes. we'll come right back yes. and talk with you. Uh, that's, that's what I love about this event. It's live and spontaneous. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, we are here live this morning, and, of course, one of our sponsors I wanted to mention is Tire Realty Group, uh, which needs homes that they um, – they need homes right now because the inventory of homes in Greenville is still very low. There are a lot more buyers than there are homes. There's only 422 homes that went about a week ago on the market. Uh, and so there, there's a lot more buyers than that out there. And uh, so you need to list your home. And I'll give you the information in just a minute on how you can list with a Tire Realty Group. But they also, uh, Tire Realty also has their Valentine's event, their, their contest going. 
you need to go to Tire Realty Group on Facebook or Instagram, and they'll it'll they'll tell you there how to register. And uh, one more winner to be announced on February 11th. They've already given away two of these prize packages, over $400 worth of packages, uh, prizes including uh, dinner for two at Nino's here in Greenville, a flower arrangement from Jefferson's Florist, and, uh, of course, um, there will be some other goodies that go along with it. Over $400 worth of prizes to be given away. And the next one that will be given away is on the 11th of February. So you have time to register. And the way to do that is to go to Tire Realty Group on Instagram or Facebook. If you want to contact uh, Tire Realty Group at 758-HOME, 758-4663, or visit them online at 99orfree.com. All right, let's go to break. It is 841, 19 in front of 9. We are live at... uh, Eastern Orthodontics and Pediatrics Dentistry. It's the 17th annual Give Kids a Smile Day event going on right now. We'll talk to some more folks here right after the break. Okay, welcome back. It is the 17th annual Give Kids a Smile Day. We are live on location this morning. This has been a lot of fun today. And uh, there are about 100 kids getting free health care today, not just shouldn't say just dental care. This thing started off as just a dental event, but now uh, you have all sorts of different organizations that are part of this, uh, including the ECU College of Nursing, which is very near and dear to my heart because my whole family has uh, been involved there for a long time. Karen Yarbrough is from the School of Nursing, and uh, she is here. She's one of the instructors, and she coordinated all the nursing students who are here today. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful, wonderful. Now, tell me what your nurses are doing here today. I have 35 student volunteers here today and six instructors, and our role today is to do anything they need us to do, but we are especially doing um, heights and weights so we can calculate BMIs for Dr. Wilson, the pediatrician, and we're also measuring blood pressures. And the goal is is to find any children that may be prehypertensive or have issues with their BMI so that Dr. Um, Wilson can make some referrals for them so that we can keep them healthy. All right, great. And uh, I see some of your nursing students running around here yes, assisting sir. the dentist and doing whatever is necessary. It's a great event, and uh, we appreciate the School of Nursing. I tell you, our College of Nursing here uh, at ECU uh, is one of the top in the country. I mean, yes, we, it we, is. You know, no matter what you say about ECU, you know, when you, people talk about ECU, you hear about the College of Nursing. So That's right. You guys do an awesome job. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We, we love to think so. We have great students that come to us from all over Eastern North Carolina, and we offer a lot of different options, and we just have the best. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. For being here. Thank you so okay, much. Great. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, we appreciate Karen Yarborough being here. Who's up next? I got to talk to my producer here. Uh, we got uh, we got Bob Sch- Dr. Bob Schifferl here. All right. The the uh, North Carolina Dental School Foundation. Good morning, sir. D- Dental Society Foundation. Thirty five year Pirate Club member. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, You're a pirate. Yeah. Good. I see you. Pirate. I see you live. Come in a little closer yeah, there. Sorry. Make sure we can hear you good on the microphone. Okay. All right, good. Uh, tell us about the uh, Dental Society Foundation. Yeah, we're the um, we're the fundraising arm for the North Carolina Dental Society, and we um, we're sending our members out. There's we have five districts in North Carolina, and I represent the fifth district, which is the eastern part of the state. Yeah. And um, so we're sending members out to um, the different Give Kids with a Smile events all over across the state this uh, this weekend. Uh, the kickoff is actually in Chapel Hill right now, so our, our chairman's over there right now, and. Uh, so I said, let me go to Greenville, small stomping grounds. I, I said, I know where Bee's Barbecue is, so I, I, have to, I have to get up there to I have to get up there to Greenville. And uh, what? Oh, he wants you. Got to get over here. Once you close the microphone, there okay. you go. Uh, I, I don't, you know, Michael. When you start giving me hand signals, yeah, I don't know what that means. He was but clapping. <laughs> But the uh, uh, so the, the events going on all over uh, North Carolina. This one I've understood one of the biggest that actually right, takes place. Right, right, right. They actually are going on all over the country. Uh, yeah, right. But I think the 80 counties in North Carolina they're they're having them right now. So uh, this is one of the older and bigger ones in North Carolina. I think uh, they've been doing this for 20, uh, 17 years or so. So yeah, uh, right, it's right. really nice. We um, we support this and we support we do um, uh, mission and mercy clinics all over the state where we uh, see the, uh, patients for uh, in different communities around the state Newburn uh, Kitty Hawk 
uh, Charlotte, all these places, and right. this is part of our, our thing we raise money all for. Right, so, uh, well, it's good to have you here. It's nice Thank to see you, Henry. Yeah. Uh, here, you the, here you are on the radio. All the bees time. later. I cook my own barbecue, but I patterned it after <laughs> yeah. bees. Well, it was nice to see. All you. right, great. Thank good you, to see you. I think we got Coach Dooley, the man, the myth, the legend. Coach Joe Dooley is here. I see he's brought some players. Coach is here this morning supporting uh, Give Kids a Smile Day after a, a win last night. How you doing? You know what? I'm doing fine. No voice, but I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was there last night. I've been, I, I don't miss many unless I'm out of town, but uh, we were there last night. And, of course, uh, um, uh, it, it was a great win. It, we needed a win. But, yeah, we did. Uh, talk about how you feel about that. I know uh, it didn't shoot well again. Uh, Three for fifteen. Uh, we we made some timely ones though. That's what that's what we'll. That's and we true. made some timely free throws. Uh, yeah, we did. In fact, the Williams kid didn't score at all till the last second of the he game. He made two big free. throws. He made though. two big free throws. But um, I, I tell you, I don't want to talk about officiating. But you know, Jaden Gardner got in trouble in the first half. I looked at the replay. He didn't touch the kid on the second foul. Well, I think I think in, it was obviously in their game plan they were going to go after Jaden because as soon as he picked up the first on the first possession, they were they were yelling one more. So their their objective was to go after him, and that's going to be a thing for us this year. Yeah. That's smart, man. He's, yeah. he's an NBA coach, so he's going to play matchups, which he did, and uh, we'll have to adjust. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Dunleavy, of course, the head coach for mm-hmm. Tulane, one of the legends. 17 years yeah, coaching in the, the NBA, NBA finals yeah. and was right, a great yeah. player for Frank McGuire of South Carolina. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you knew this was going to be a tough year, and, and, of course, when you get into the conference, it's tough going on the road playing some of the best teams in the country in this conference. Uh, but I tell you, I, and I, I keep saying this, I, I've never seen a team play as hard as your team. You, the guys play hard. They're not as talented as the teams they play, but they play hard. Well, I think one thing, that's one thing we control is effort, and that's yeah. what we've talked to our guys about. And I don't, I don't think that should be, uh, in all honesty, I don't think that should be commended. It should be, you know, a given that you play hard. Yeah. You might not play well, right. but if you play right. hard, you give yourself your best chance. And I think the guys, for the most part, have tried to give good, good effort. Um, of course, you were here before, so you knew a lot about what to expect here. But then you went off, had those great years with Bill Self uh, at Kansas and then head coach at Florida Gulf Coast. And then, of course, took this job again for the second time. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to think that, there, that you knew what you were walking into in this conference. Have there been any major surprises for you, though, positively or negatively? I, I think the one thing is I think that uh, – I've been not surprised, but I mean the, the, the just how small we are, which I you know going in right. and all the things you know it's it's your it's going to be some tough sledding, but we're always smaller, aren't we? Uh, we'll get bigger. Uh, we, that's that's be something we could. But even along the wings, we're small in the backcourt, and I thought that you know that last night even against Tulane, you saw how small we were, and I think well, they we'll, had that they had that blonde haired kid, the freshman who was six, a six uh, eight seven, guard, six eight wood, and and, and, and played the like from, a guard, and and, and and but they they flipped the floor and they posted their guards and their big shot threes, but. I do think that um, the energy in the building in, in Minji's the last couple of games has been terrific, and I think that's that's as we move forward is going to help us a lot. I really do believe that. Yeah. Uh, Joe Dooley, the head basketball coach at ECU here this morning. You're out here this morning. I saw Jaden. I saw some of the other players walking around. Uh, just out here for support uh, for the kids and the dentist. This is a great I mean, event, isn't it? I mean, think about the, 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 these these young kids are being able to do something they weren't going to be able to do, and people taking time to, to help their communities. It's a great cause. Yeah, it absolutely is. You guys hit the road again this uh, – no, you're back home. No, we leave Saturday. We leave yeah, practice right. here today, practice tomorrow, and we'll fly out tomorrow afternoon to Connecticut, play UConn on Sunday afternoon, and then uh, we'll fly right back after the game. Right, and back home Wednesday night, Wednesday I Wednesday against Wichita State. Yeah, and, we got uh, Wichita State. and they're, they're, It only gets easier. We've only got Wichita State, Houston, Connecticut, uh, Tulsa. But it's not the home. Wichita State and that, Memphis of old. Yeah, but you know, they're, they're, they're having it, a little bit of a tougher year. I mean, also. you think about our league. We've got you know two teams. One that won the national title five years ago. Wichita State was in the Final Four um, three years ago. It's it's Memphis is good. Houston, Houston is a potential Final Four team with the right matchup. Right, right. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Of course, appreciate you Great guys. Great to see you. Thanks, Henry. All right, good to see you. I think we got Sylvia Brown coming in. Yeah. Uh, we got like Jasper. We got like three minutes. Anybody you want to get on? We need to get them on. We need to get you on to close it. By the way, uh, <laughs> we are back here. Sylvia Brown, who is the? Uh, let me make sure I get it right. Are you dean of nursing? That's great. Dean of the school of nursing. How yes. are you? Doing great. Good Doing to see. Great. You just had one of your instructors on. You guys are great to participate in this. 
Yeah, we're, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for our students to um, work with other healthcare professionals and they're helping do some teaching to the um, parents and also the um, children that are here. So we're just really glad to be a part of this opportunity. Uh, I was just saying to Karen Yarborough what a, uh, you know, how proud we are of the College of Nursing. Of course, you know my family's history. I have two nurses, my daughter and my wife are ECU nurses. Pirate nurses. Yeah, pirate <laughs> nurses. But uh, seriously, we are, uh, we have the most prestigious nursing school, I think, in the southeast, one of the tops in the country. Yes, we were just ranked number six for public schools in the U.S. Wow. Um, so that was uh, quite an accomplishment. How did they, how did they rank us so low? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we think we're number one. So <laughs> we, we prepare a lot of wonderful nurses yeah, that are making yeah, a big difference right. in eastern North Carolina. Well, it's great to see you. Great to thank see you. you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia Brown. Hey, Jasper, we got like a minute and a half. You need to come on. You going to get Big Guy on with you? Yeah. Is Big Guy going to come? Big Guy, get over here. We got. I got. I got two minutes. Get over here, Jasper. Yeah, we gotta get with Jasper. Get over here. Get over here. Sit down, big guy. You're wasting time. We're almost out of time. Matt Maloney, big guy from the Pirate Club. How you doing, Bob? Fantastic. Good this to is, see you. This is phenomenal. We, we, we've had Cliff Godwin on. We've had Mike Houston on. We had Joe Dooley on, and now we got the real star of ECU athletics, Matt Maloney. The big. How many years you been at the Pirate Club? Twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-eight and a half. And there, if you need anything, just call big guy. No, we got such a wonderful place. This is what Eastern North Carolina is all about. How awesome is this? That's what John Gilbert sat, said when he sat down. <laughs> that, that, you know, this is this is this is why he came here because he knew what kind of community it was. All right, stay, don't don't leave. But I got like a minute. And I wanted to get Jasper on. We're in our last minute, Jasper. All right, so, Dr. Jasper Lewis, who owns this practice and one of the organizers of this uh, event. But it's uh, the whole East Central Dental Society, med school, nursing school, I all know. of that group. You're gonna, you're gonna def you're gonna deflect the, the credit. But uh, uh, again, this looks like one of the most successful ever. Henry, we have people from every facet of Eastern North Carolina here. We even have somebody from Wilmington who's on the Dental Society thing. Yeah, just made and up. all the people from athletics. And I wish everybody in the audience could see the eyes on these children when the athletes go up and really make over them and talk to them. Because some of these children only see them on TV. Right. And that's, as, as Big Guy just said, that's what Eastern North Carolina's about. We all work together for the benefit of everybody else in Eastern North Carolina. Well, nobody does more of that than you do, and uh, thank you for all this effort today. Thank you for having us, and uh, God bless you. You're a saint. We appreciate you, you living here, but I think there's some question about that. No, there's not. <laughs> not at all. What would you say, Maloney? He's the best. Dr. Lewis and Walter Williams, what they did for us to get this uh, dental school going. I mean, oh, yeah. they're heroes. They're absolutely. They really and Dr. Lewis is so humble. Yeah. But how about his uh, mom being 100 years old and a oh, basketball letter winner? I didn't hear about that, but we got to go. We gotta <laughs> Everybody have a great weekend. We're back in the studio Monday. Uh, enjoy the nice weekend weather.